So some things about me. Uh, I'm working at John Lewis at the moment. Uh, actually, let me just start sharing also. One second. Mm -hmm. Okay, can you see my screen, everybody? Yeah, it works. Yeah, now. it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. Let me just make this smaller. Okay. So I'm working uh, at John Lewis, uh, and I have worked with uh, companies like Metrobank, GiftGov, Checkout Smart, and if you are living in, in London, you most probably know all of them. And I'm the founder of a company called CMS Driven myself. And this is like a CMS tool for React applications. And it's not only limited to React, it's also uh, for Angular and Vue. But at the same time, uh, right now, it's focusing only on React. And uh, I have right, uh, uh, cre I have created a lot of code in the past uh, 10 years and I'm trying to optimize it in, in the best possible way and trying to, you know, uh, improve the code and efficiency and, uh, with efficiency and quality so I can reuse this code again and again in the, and, you know, get all the benefits out of it. So let's start from the very basics and then we go to more advanced concepts. So what is a, what is a React component? Okay, uh, components are building blocks of a React app. Uh, as you can see, there is like a UI tree uh, of components that one encapsulates the other. And in the end, you can show, you can build an app uh, that it has many, many, many components inside. So uh, to put it very simple, a, a UI component, it's a JavaScript class or can be a function that contains properties, what we call them, we call them props. And we return a React element which describes how one section of the UI should appear. So as you can see on the screen on the browser side, the number one is one component, the number two is a, is a different component, number three is another component, and the number five is a nested component of, of, of component number two. Now, a component consists of two parts. The first is how it looks, is the UI, and the second is how it works, uh, and this is the UX part. Uh, how, how it works is described by JavaScript, and how it looks is described by CSS. Uh, if you gather all these components to an app, uh, oh, sorry, of an app under one package or a module, this is what we call a UI component library. So is a UI component library are all, all of these components if you gather them under one module. So now there are two opinions out there how you can uh, regarding how you can break down the components and what is the best way you you can break down the components and uh, i'm saying this because this is very opinionated some people uh, going with one approach some people going with the other and there are pros and cons we will discuss about this so one way to do this is to break to break this down is by saying every single atom of your app let, let's say buttons, radio buttons, input, all of them can be a component. There you have to go in a very small uh, piece of functionality and, and you create a different, a different folder with a different file inside, different, maybe you put in the unit test and actually you, you have to put unit test if you write a code and you put the CSS or you put it, the CSS as a styled inside uh, so it all depends uh, how you want to build it. The main concept here is where you break it down. You break it down into the smaller atoms, which is the buttons and radio buttons, or you, you, you break it down on the block elements, which can be carousel, forms, headers, search elements, like the one on, on, on the bottom. So let's see the every single atom approach. So if you want to break down things in, uh, for example, if you want to create a component button, okay, so there are some problems with this approach. The, 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 the pros is uh, 
you have a predictable and declarative behavior. And th what this means is, given a state, let's say the button is on hover state, and, and uh, the button is going to always display as it is on focus. So you will, you will get a predictable way of uh, connecting the model with what it looks like. And this way you can also test it because you can use something we call just snapshots and you can take a snapshot of the, of the application on when you're running the unit test, you, you just run the just snapshots and automatically compares a previous version of, of this UI app uh, component with a, with a new one. And then you can see if you broke something. Now, this is all those are the you know the, the benefits of, of doing it in every single atom, but there are some cons doing it. First of all, it takes a lot of effort to code all the possible scenarios for, for, for the button because a button can be in many states, can be on focus, can be on not focus, can be you know hovered. Maybe you, you, ju you just have to do some uh, on click on change uh, if, it's, if it's a different component you do on change. So there are different scenarios you have to cover and you have to be, when, when you start building the component, you have to, to, you know, to write the unit test, you have to, to do a lot of boilerplate, you have to do the ESLint and, and, and like it's a, a, a time consuming process for you to, to build a UI component library. And we have done the same thing before in the past. Uh, we have been in a company, I, I was I allocated to, to only build a UI component library for one of the companies I mentioned before. And my only responsibility was just to build the next UI component library. And we start splitting everything to you know, components and we, was, uh, we were creating uh, NPN packets in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a repository separately for every single component. And we have to put versioning for every single component and then other components consume your your components and you have a versioning hell there because one component is based in a specific version of, an, of a component and another version and another component is, is, is depending on, on another component and then you have this uh, you know npn calls and you just you just have to keep up uh, especially when you have to deal with uh, uh, too many people in, on the same team uh, and sometimes there are different teams, even different people working in, in a company, and they want us to consume the same, um, yeah, and they just want to consume the same uh, components. Uh, there, there are some difficulties doing this. Uh, the other problem is you will not be able to reuse your designs. And this is because when you writing something in uh, JSX, let's say, you let's say you don't create a CSS outside of of or and you, you include everything into one component. The the problem with this will be that you are going to type everything up into one file, and it's going to be very difficult for if you want to style a, a legacy. Let's say you have a, P, a PHP application, and then a, a part of the application is, is in PHP, and part of the application is in, it is in React. And you want to have a unique style guide between all your apps. If you include all the CSS into and all your effort into building a, 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 a just a button, and you style the button internally, and you create like this atomic uh, approach then you will not be able to reuse this uh, CSS. And also if, the, if a new framework come up in the market later on, you will not be able to, to take out just the design and, and put it to the new uh, API. So you have to rewrite everything from scratch. And you essentially create a wrapper component around a native API because what it comes from React is we get all this on click, on change, all these events, the nice events that you essentially what you do, you, if you build a component for, for, for a button, essentially you just create an event handler for on click, you pass this event handler to a native API and you just pass it over. So you're just doing a click, it pass the, 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 the click event under it and then you just call it back. So 
you just write a wrapper, an unnecessary wrapper around the component. Again, there are some pros and some cons doing this. And so th this is it, because the CSS hasn't changed much since uh, when it, it, it created initially in 1996. So we have three versions of CSS, but nothing major, nothing like a very, very breaking, like completely breaks the, the, uh, the way we doing it. When we doing it through, you know, React is, is not like, we never, we don't know yet if it's going to be there for, for a long time. Maybe it's going to be like a, the next library, the next framework, which is going to come and replace it. Because things changing so quickly, you cannot predict this. Uh, we live in a fast-paced environment uh, with too many changes uh, all the time. And I think it makes more sense if we invest more time on building a style guide in pure CSS or SAS files. Because, because of the reason, uh, as I explained to you before, like there is a, a, a compatibility with CSS for, for many years now, and, uh, and it is, it's still unchanged. So imagine if you built something like that, you're building a, a UI a style guide with your typography, with all your branding colors, with uh, all the paragraph, how you know, or, or HTML and CSS, so you can just copy and paste and, and at any place in your app. So the atomic components, you don't, you don't need an atomic components, like for the smaller parts, you, you can just use HTML and CSS for this ones. But this is just one opinion, it's, it doesn't mean you have to do it in this way. I explained you the reasons why you shouldn't, what are the cons by doing this, is you know, more time, more effort, and you cannot reuse the CSS style guide. You can just reuse this, you are locked down to a vendor, you are locked down to React. So when you have to make a change to a framework later on on the process, you will not be able to do it, you have to rewrite everything. What I recommend, you can definitely create a, a library of UI block elements. This is, this is, there is no doubt about this because uh, this is usually a combination of two or more atomic components. Let's say an input and a button. You put them together, you create, you, you, there is some logic there because it, it makes sense because when you click the button, something else happened to, to, to you know, maybe something happens to the paragraph. Uh, and there is a, a reason why you have to write a unit test uh, uh, on, on this, you know, interaction and why you need to, to, to put every, to encapsulate everything under one component that you can reuse again and again as a block element. Imagine you take this uh, block element, the, the one you see on the screen now, made with, with love by CMS Driven. Imagine if you, if you can take this block element, change just the copy and place it in a, to a different uh, place of your page, maybe in a different URL. So, by maintaining a, a UI component documentation, you can get the whole UI UX team, product owners, testers, devs, everybody get, can get involved. As you can see here, we know how we call the, the first component. We call it call to action. We know what, what this is doing because we have some description and we have a live preview of this component. So we can know about the props that this component accepts. We know how it looks. We know how it's called. So the UX UI team, they can now, instead of creating another component again, uh, that looks very similar to this one, they can reuse the same one because now everybody knows how it's called. They know it's, it's the call to action. And because everybody knows exactly how to refer to this component, because everybody have access to this documentation, they, on their designs, they can say, this is a, a call to action button. So you can just reuse it. You don't have to redesign something that it looks similar, but it's, you know, like some pixels under, you know, some, a little bit uh, different on size. Maybe you can make a little bit more flexible on your props and, and, and you just put this 
uh, you know, extra parameters. So you can make it in, in a different size, you can make it uh, look different. So if you go through the route of using this uh, CSS style guide, some of the things you have to consider is using BAM. And this is because of the, what, what is BAM? BAM is a block element modifier, is, 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 a, is a methodology that helps you create usable components. And you can have a code sharing in, in, the, in the front end development without anybody um, breaks something that already exists out there. So we have the block. The block is the is one big piece. Can be like the navigate the navigation bar. An element is maybe some links in the navigation bar, and the modifier is what we call we call it modifier. And, and what this means is modifier classes are the classes which uh, have to do with the attributes of the element. For example. You can have a red modifier, you can have a blue modifier, you can have a large modifier, a small modifier, and then you can combine. I will show you now what I mean. So the card element, the, the card is a block. So we can use the, the name convention card. The, H, the H1 is the title. So we can use a naming convention called card underscore underscore title. Why we using underscore underscore title is because now because we have prefixed it with a card, we can in this way uh, create something like a vendor, like like a um, it's like a namespace. So nobody else can write something similar that can override your title. Because maybe in some point in, in your app, you have title class and in another place you have, uh, again, the same class and they can collapse and they can create a, 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 an issue. So you, you can have the title attached to a, to a namespace card, all of them together as, as a one namespace. And then if you see a little bit under it on the P class, you can have card text, which is all the attributes related with a card text are there, all the basic attributes are there. And then you have the extra, so you put another class, which is the card text secondary. This is going to, to do only with the attributes of the secondary. So, so I will show you now what I mean. One second, yeah. So, so what I mean with this is, the uh, the secondary button can be a red button, for example, or can be a blue button. So the card text itself, maybe it has to do with where it's positioned, what is the font size. Maybe it's, we want always to be to, to to have some standard styles, and then we just want to change one only attribute, and this only attribute can be like a color, maybe can be can be the size, can be something we, we, we grouped together and we say this is a secondary and this is a primary. And we can mix and match now. So BEM and SOLID, why those two you know, principles are very similar together? This is because every CSS class is written to serve only one purpose. We do not reuse the card class for anything else than the card UI block. So we do not reuse the card for anything else than this UI part. And therefore we cannot have like this, uh, these bugs of overriding by mistake. And if you take the interface segregation principle from solid, what this is telling us is, is telling us that we, instead of having ev everything into one class, one big class, let's say card, instead of writing just a card, you create smaller classes, what we call in programming interfaces. The sim similar here, we, you just create a smaller CSS classes for every single modifier. So instead of creating the card, you can create a card title big, card title small, card title highlighted, and then you can just mix and match. So you, you have 
uh, unlimited possibilities. Some of the problems on uh, software development uh, teams. Uh, we as a devs, we don't like to make content chains. There are too many times like product owners coming back to us asking, you know, you have to make these uh, content changes uh, and you just want to do these in images, uh, just replace this image with another one. It would be great if we can focus, you know, in a more complex tasks by building a UI component library and leave all these content changes to non tech people. This will be a, a nice approach, approach so because for their perspective, they want to make the changes very quickly, and we don't want to, you know, we don't want to do these changes. is It's not nice for us as the devs. We don't like this. Uh, deploying new pages is usually a very slow process, guys. Every time a product owner asks a developer to make a change. This will take some time, especially in big corporation. Uh, this is due to the required extra code you have to, to do. And there are also some bureaucracies in some companies, uh, uh, especially when, when, when we talk about copy changes that we want to roll out immediately uh, and things that we want to turn on and off very quickly. Let's say something is very bad. You, we have like a, a GDPR issue on the website and we want just to turn off this section very quickly. So normally you have to do Git, you maybe use Git flow, maybe use trunk approach. You have to do a code change. You have to make a deployment to the server. You have to do this quality of assurance for every code you change. Maybe it's a two thumbs up approach. Uh, maybe it's, it's some uh, you know uh, regression test before you run the stages. So there are a lot of stages, and this is a usually a slow process. Slow process for us. So uh, there is a gap between the tech and non-tech people. Uh, in the web development department, there are developers, CTOs, tech leads. All of them consider us a technical. And then there are non-technical people, product owners, copywriters, UI UX designers. Non-tech people within a company feel helpless waiting for every single change to be done by us, by developers. It would be nice if there was a way we can bridge this gap between them, right? Another problem is branding authority is at risk. What I mean with this one. Uh, Sometimes when you go to a web page, you go into a login page and it looks a little bit different from the main website, or you go to a section and, and looks completely, well, not completely, but a little bit different. Maybe the, the colors are not exactly the same hex uh, codes. Maybe, maybe the paragraphs are not on the same spacing. You, you notice the difference between one page and the other page. That's why you need the CSS, CSS um, style guide because you want to enforce the consistency of the, how it looks like. So when you navigate through all the website, you feel you are on the same branding. You are still on the same website. Uh, some, uh, I know that some product owners uh, and tech leads, they have decided to use some CMS tools like uh, WordPress just for building the, the landing pages. The problem here is exactly what I said, is the, the branding will not be the same, the, the one from the UI UX team. And um, you know there are always limitations. You cannot do any, everything with WordPress. You cannot do everything uh, with uh, all these tools like Wix. You, 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 that's why they're hiring us. That, that's why they're hiring us because we can do all this custom logic. But they still want to take some benefits out of it because they, they, the benefits of using uh, Wix.com and Squarespace and, and WordPress and all these CMS tools is because they can build pages quicker. And obviously they can do it in a lower cost for them. But there are some cons doing this. There is no consistency. SEO optimization is not guaranteed because all of this is spit out just in HTML code. There is a high learning curve for, for, for them until they know the tool. And there is no way to implement very, very custom uh, complex logic. And they're using us for, because 
of the consistent UI branding we offer because we can do anything, anything is possible because we can write everything in React and you know you can do anything you want. Uh, there's no limitations there. And SEO optimization, uh, you know, because we when we write the H1 is always considered as a title. When we create an image, we put in an alt. So, uh, so we can optimize it for SEO as well. Uh, but again, there are some, some uh, cons with this approach. There, there is a, one second, I'm, I'm getting a message. Just want to make sure everything is okay. Uh, yeah, that's fine. I can duplicate it by voice. So. Oh, okay. That's fine. okay, yeah. Uh, sorry, I thought it was you uh, trying to say something. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, could you provide a simple example of when uh, building a page with, by CMS could be useful, for example, uh, and show a nice page built with React? Uh, that probably would be a, a better visual example. Thank you. Yeah. So. All the, all the landing pages of, of, of uh, first of all, all the landing pages, all the marketing pages can be built with uh, CMS, first of all. And except of those, uh, but, but the thing is, uh, the question is which CMS you are going to use? Because there are there is a concept called headless CMS. Headless CMS, it's, it's just an API, so it's not an actual CMS. If you think about it, a typical CMS as we know it, uh, you you can just drag and drop components, uh, UI components into a page, as we know it from WordPress, Joomla, and anything anything similar like you know, that we had in the past. You drag and drop UI component, components into a page, and then you just make code changes. So you don't have to do it manually. You don't have to write down page components and you don't have to, to, to put the component one after the other. You don't have to make this uh, link between the API, the headless API and your own components. So this, this is, I, will, I will end up some, a little bit later what you can use for a CMS. Uh, at the moment, what I'm saying is you can use them in all landing pages and all marketing pages for sure. And you can use it also in, in uh, maybe some, if you have like a, a multi-page uh, forums or you can, you can use it. You can even use it for a dashboard to tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. But I will explain a little bit later on how, how you, and, and, and why you, you should use it. Okay, let's uh, yeah. later on, on this one. Okay, an ideal world. An ideal world would be if we remove all the scones from here and we keep only the pros. So what will, will, will look like? Pages will be built quicker uh, with, a, with a lower cost because some tec technical people will only build the UI components and for the, for the non-technical non people can, can also change the content. We have a UI consistent branding and anything is possible at the same time because you build everything in React. We, you, you, keep, you keep having the SEO optimization, but at this time you don't have the, anymore the slow process, you can deploy very quickly. So this is the ideal world. Let's see some statistics. Traditional CMS is dying. And as we can see here, WordPress, Drupal, Joomla, Wix, all of them, they, they just going down. And there is a reason behind it. And this is because there is no way to implement custom functionality. And everybody just now turned to, uh, to the UI component libraries and frameworks like uh, Angular, which is a framework, uh, Vue.js and React, which is uh, libraries. And we see right now like a huge increase the last years since 2004. And we, you, you can see like a very huge uh, increase uh, to today. Let me just show you something. So this is now where, where I'm coming. Uh, I, was, I was back then using the traditional CMS where you have like the, uh, everything as one solution in under one infrastructure, let's say WordPress, you have everything under one, one project. 
uh, you don't use React back then. You you cannot create live documentation. You cannot test your code. It's you know it's bad. The CMS driven is the tool that I have built, and this allows you to create React components in the way you was doing them anyway. So there is no change on your UI components. So you, you, you just build UI components as you did before. And then you have an online documentation generated and you maintain, you know, uh, so this UI documentation looks like, da, 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 like this. So this is the live documentation. So you have the name of the component, you have a, 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 a paragraph about what it is and you have a preview. So back to the presentation and uh, that, that. yeah. So what are the steps to doing this? It's very, very simple. You just have to sign up. You have to download the boi React boilerplate initially. You can use your own, uh, you, can, uh, you can use the existing code base or you can, you can just uh, download a, a boilerplate so you can start playing, npm install, npm run start, and that's it. How you build a UI component? The same way you was building it anyway. So here I have an example. I have a, I have a, the made with love component, with, which uh, it's this one. Let me go back. Sorry for this back and forward. Just to give you an example, is this one? It says the third one, made with love by CMS driven. So what this is doing? One second. It's it's a very straightforward component. It's just a, a functional component. You only have to use props as the inputs. So the only difference is like, instead of you hard code everything in, in, in the component, you use props. So you allow to be mod this component to be modified from outside. So you was writing this code anyway. So you, was making your, you were making your components dynamically anyway. So you was creating all these best practices of, of not hard code the text and put the props from outside. So, there is no difference here on how you build it. So you, what you do here, you just create, I have put the under, under, underline. So you have an image Insta on the SRC, you're getting this CDN link from outside as a prop. You have the props company name and you take this title from outside of the component. And then you just export the component as you already do. So there is no change here. This is proper React component. So after you create the React component, you just have to register it in, in, in a file called cmsdriven.js. So you just import it and then export it to the module. Uh, so you, you make it available for the CMS to use it. Then you have to go to the cmsdriven.io and you have to add a new UI component there. So you are going to use the same name as the component name, as you can see here, made with love. It's the same name with here. It's the same name we put it here on the key, made with love. So you just put, you name your component and then you add the props. So you add the props one by one, you add company name, IMG and alt. As you see, this match exactly uh, the names of the props here. So you make CMS driver hour about your intentions, about that this component needs these props. And then you can see on the right side how it looks like an, as an example. What are the, the possible values that this component could take? It could take a, 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 a string, initially company name is a string, a IMG is a CDN link as a string again, and an alt is still a string. You can put more, more types, you can put booleans here, you can put uh, integers, uh, uh, rich editors, there, there are more options. And then what you have to do, you have to create a page on the CMS driven side. So you forget about these page components. So you don't have to write any more page components. This is on the past. So you can just create a new URL page localhost 3000 slash react.js or slash George and any name. And you put your title, the title is the title of the page. You put meta descriptions, very easy to understand, meta keywords with comma separated. And then you can say things like, I want my page to be indexed by uh, 
by Google search engines, or I want I, and I want them to be follow. I want the search engines to follow the links within the page. And you can choose if you want to. If is your page is, is a dashboard and it's like a private, you don't want to to enable these uh, actions. So by saving this now on the screen, it's going to create a new page behind the hood. So you don't have to do anything on this manually. And then you can just import by clicking this button, import UI component, you get a list of the components, you click one of them and you put them one after the other as a block element components. And this is like the, the, the made with love will be like the block element. Uh, and paragraph will be another block element as we talked before about BEM. Uh, if you click now in, 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 on, on the first component, you will get something like this automatically generated for you. So you are going to get a, a form generated with all the props. For example, the company name was the string is going to automatically create an input for you. So you don't have to put a JSON file there. Uh, the IMG is going to allow you to upload an image to, to a CDN on Google Cloud. And the alt is going to allow you to put a string there. So all of these props are going to automatically feed the, the, the React component. And it's going to place this React component with these properties into a page that we created before here, this React.js page. So this React.js page will have the made with love component. Uh, sorry, this, this page React.js will have the made with love component as the first component paragraphs as a second block element component and the features as the third one. And the made, made with love component is going to have these texts printed to, it's going to look like this. So I just mark it around so you can see where it is the component. So the first component block element will be made with love. The second will be paragraphs and you can just reorder them. So if you see here, you can just click on the right and just reorder the components up and down. You can delete one of them if you want dynamically without any code changes. And when you are ready and you have test everything to your local environment, you can just click go to production and this will send everything to production without going, without any code change. You don't involve at all a GitHub. You have done no code changes essentially. What you have done is just you change the props that's, that's why you do not you don't want even to test it because you have already tested it to work in a predictable way in the first place in a dynamic way you have just tested it you have created your unit tests uh, integration tests and end to end tests already what you only change are the, the content of the props it's not the behavior so there are like like different steps here like you, you first okay what you say george now is you just building a ui component library uh, that you can reuse you you you, you have built a, a you maintain a live documentation you can drag and drop these components uh, to a page dynamically from this live documentation and at the same time you can add this the same page itself dynamically so how cool is this and yes, and now it takes me to the code, the live coding challenge that I want to put you guys. And I want to see how you, you guys doing after the Q&A. So I'm going to run, I'm going to explain what is the coding challenge. And then I'm going to go to a Q&A to answer questions. And when you guys finish with this, you can join us and, and you know, we take it from there if you have any questions and see how you progress with this one. So I would like for, from you guys to build a dynamic page called slash coding slash challenge. The page title I want to be, you can put anything you want on the page title. I just say coding challenge at the moment. You can put a meta description, which is, uh, this is a test coding challenge. You can put a meta description this is for search engines to find your your uh, website it can be coding slash challenge slash uh, seems driven and you can put the meta robots settings to index and follow so this means that search engines have to follow the website and uh, index the website and follow the links within the, the website and then you can create a new ui component i want you to call it 
one paragraph, let's say. And this is going to only have a title, a paragraph, and maybe for if this is if you have more time on this, you can put an image also. And all of them I want to be to be handled from outside. So I want this com UI component to be dynamically uh, the content I want to come from outside. I want to come from the CMS. I want you to register this UI component after you build it. As we said, this is a UI component that you you can just, uh, it's not very, you know, it's, it's nothing you, if you know how to build a UI component, you can build it. Uh, it's nothing to do with the CMS. Then you have to register it. This is the extra step. You have just to register this component. And you can do this in, first of all, on the cms-driven.js, which belongs on the root folder of the boilerplate. And uh, then you have to register it online. You then can import the one paragraph component to the page that initially I asked you to build, the slash coding challenge page. And then you can add another one. So you can reuse now the same component. So you can have one paragraph and another paragraph, but with a different content this time. So you will reuse the same component first and then second, but with a different title. And just to help you out guys, I have put this on, on the right side. I have put some CSS because I, you will not have like all the time right now to, to build a CSS and everything. So I have some some ready-made CSS, so you can use this for your UI component. And you can always have a look and see the uh, the other components that exist already on the folder, and, you know, and just see how it, it's done and, and just repeat it. Uh, that it is at the moment, as the talk. Uh, after we finish all of this, if anybody wants to be part of my focus group later on, you can be in touch with me on, on these links. Uh, because I create a focus group, I, I you know, I give it for free. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to get some feedback and improve it and pivot to see how how you developers want, you know, to do uh, this product to be built, because this can be potentially a good tool for it, it, it's the next step between having a storybook, uh, which is just a documentation and having uh, you know a, a, a cms which is now nowadays is only headless cms out there uh, and there's no this this gap in, in between how you can just build a ui component library and you can just track and drop these components to, into a dynamically made page so ideally we want as developers to build a ui component library and we want to just test our components build build them in, in a good way focusing on how to create like a, a, a documentation about them, be proud of them, be proud of creating this UI component library and then leave, you know, leave the page generation to somebody else. They can, they can just create a new page. They can put them inside, they can play with them. It's, it's, it's all good. You don't have to anymore to create uh, page components. You don't want to create page, page components. You don't want to create routing uh, anymore for, for especially for marketing and landing pages. Uh, that's it. Thank you for your time. Uh, let's now go to the QA, right?